It is a busy Wednesday here on the Stripe Show podcast, Froggy Wednesdays, and we are talking to Joel Damon. Joel, you know what? It's Masters Week. Do you get as jacked up for Masters Week as the rest of us? Honestly, probably not. Uh, I I like watching Sunday. I mean, and I'll, I'll tune in like, um, you know, like every other event. I, I watch a decent amount of golf. So um, if I'm not playing that weekend, do I love it? Yeah. Uh, maybe when I get a play on my first one, like the allure of it, you know, and like the whole thing will kind of make more sense to me. But, um, I don't know. There's, there's, I think there's too many rules at Augusta. There's way too many rules for a guy like me. Um, <laughs> it so, is a lot of rules. Yeah. I don't think you can take your shirt off on the green at Augusta, Joel. I think that's a bad idea. <laughs> I imagine I probably won't be invited back for that one. Yeah. So, uh, I just, there's just a lot of rules. Yeah. Is it fun? But I mean, I don't, I guess it, it is, it's great, but I don't. I don't get excited as the rest of the golf world, that's for sure. Have you ever been on the property or no? I have not. Uh, I got invited once a couple of years ago and said I was going to try to make it there on my own. And if that doesn't work out, then I'll try to beg and plead to go play it someday. You know, it's almost like a almost like the Super Bowl. You hear guys say, until I play in a Super Bowl, I'm not going to a Super Bowl to watch everybody else play in what I want to be playing in. So I, I kind of get that, that, that mindset of, if I'm going to go to Augusta National, I'm going to be playing in the Masters. I'm not going to go watch somebody else do what I think I deserve to be doing. Right. I think that's that's kind of where my mind frame is on that one. Um, hopefully, I've made enough connections along the way that um, uh, if it doesn't work uh, for some reason in my playing career, then I'll hopefully you know get, get, get another way there. Oh, you'll get in there. You'll get another win. Now, I was under the impression that when you won automatically on the PGA Tour, you got a Masters invite because just this past week, J.J. Spawn wins his first event. The very, I mean, what, four days before the Masters starts at the Valero, and that got him in. So I was under the impression that you got in, but you said the event you won, the uh, 2021 Corrales, that was the opposite field event from the match play, so therefore Correct. you don't get in. Yeah, so there's, you know, they have four or five half-point events um, throughout the year, and uh, the Masters has said that they want only full field event winners, which is fine. Uh, those are their rules, and uh, we all know the rules. Uh, so um, I just got to win a bigger, better, more often. That's, uh, that's the plan, or get top 50 in the world. So that's what it is. You either win or get top 50 in the world, and that automatically gets you into the Masters. Correct. Now, are you as glued this week as everybody else is to the uh, Tiger uh scenario whether he's playing whether he's not i saw I mean, this morning yeah. that he, he is playing it looks like yeah it's i mean it's a little exhausting sure but uh i mean i'm really excited to watch him play for sure i will tune in in the mornings uh you know before live coverage i you know I've, i got the app downloaded for the week so i will be watching a lot of tiger because he's tiger woods um and he's the greatest of all time so and it's more impressive you know with this comeback and and what he's done and just even be able to be playing again you know, only 13 or 14 months after his car accident. So right. uh, I, I will be tuned in for that. And I mean, I, I hope he some, somehow is around the lead on Sunday because it might be the greatest comeback in sports history if he pulls something like this off. Right. I mean, he already had arguably one of the greatest comebacks ever by winning the Masters in 2019, which was phenomenal. I think everybody remembers where they were watching Tiger win in 2019. But I think if he's able to pull off Number one, if he tees it up on Thursday, which it looks like he is going to tee it off on Thursday, mm -hmm. if he makes the cut and is in contention, I mean, this is unbelievable to a guy that literally thought, I mean, when we saw that car accident in February of last year, it was a question of not ever playing golf again. It was a question of living. Then it was whether, is he going to keep his leg? Is he going to walk? And now to think that what we've seen, I have saw the reports that Freddie said yesterday his his ball speeds were somewhere around 175 miles per hour. He's driving it as far as JT is and hitting fairways. This is insane. I, I agree. It is insane. Even when he played with Charlie in that father son deal in last December, like you know, I know it's kind of a hit and giggle, and he's in a golf cart, but uh, like that was just it, it's amazing. And um, you know, I I kind of counted him out after that first one, after, you know, thinking he'll. But he when he came back, people don't really think about, it, but he was playing at like a top. 25 in the world level for a while you know he had some top 10s he, he had his near win um and then uh you know so when he showed up at augusta last time he's actually was playing some decent golf pretty good you know he wasn't the tiger of old you know right. that'll never happen again but um he was playing at a pretty high level so uh this one is just a huge question mark I haven't seen this guy play in what 18 or 19 months or something and um who knows uh but he's always when he's on a golf course he always 
you know, he, he, he gets it done and he's just been, you know, when, when, when you're the greatest of all time, you should probably stop doubting the guy uh, when he gets on a golf course. Exactly. As long as he can walk. Right. Uh, I think he's gonna. Ha he'll have something to say about contention because if his ball striking is good, he knows where to miss it, where not to miss it. There, if he's hitting the ball where he wants to hit it, where he's looking, he's always going to be uh, a force to be reckoned with at Augusta National. And I think he's been chipping and putting a ton the previous whatever four, five, six months. Is my guess. As soon as he could actually chip and putt, like that's something you can do in your living room. Or I sounds like he's got an incredible backyard. So doing those little things is. Uh, I imagine the uh, the uh, sh short game will be pretty pretty darn solid, and like you said, if he hits it in the fairway, he'll he'll be. I can't imagine he wouldn't be around, but I don't right. Know. Yeah, as a golf fan, I watch him and Charlie play, and I think Charlie would kick my ass if we played golf. If I if I played Charlie Woods in golf, he would literally destroy me. If we played from the same tees, it would not matter. He would destroy me. His his swing looks that good. Charlie definitely got it from his dad on that one. That's for that's for sure. The other day I saw a meme that said, how bad is your life? Charlie Woods woke up this morning, got on a private jet with with Justin Thomas and his dad, been played Augusta National. What did you do? I'm like, yep, yeah, you're right. You're that's right. exactly right. Charlie's got it going on. Um, but golf is just, golf is better off when Tiger Woods is on a golf course. Would you agree with that? 100%. Absolutely. I mean, it really is. And, and golf is uh, one of my favorite weeks of the year. I love the Masters. I live here in Ponte Vedra. I love the players. We'll get into the players week that felt like it went on forever. Uh, and I love the waste management. And you and Harry Higgs made a statement at the ma at the uh, waste management that I thought is more of what golf needs. And when I saw the stories after that, there was a chance there was going to be you guys were going to be reprimanded for what you did. And I'm like, no, no, because there's guys that I'm friends with that aren't huge golfers. They're big football nuts. They're not big golfers. Sure. And they saw the hole in one from Sam Ryder. They saw what you and Harry did. And to me, it brings a whole new audience that isn't normally watching our sport and more eyes on our sport is always a good thing. Yeah, and, and I would agree with that. I mean, the, the, the 16th hole at the waste management is just crazy. Uh, you know, it's, it's like there's nothing else in golf like it. Um, and it makes you do kind of crazy things sometimes. Um, as much as... You know, and, and Sam Ryder's hole in one was obviously incredible, and the beers coming down. I do think they need to. It's going to get a little dangerous if the beers keep going there. I think they're going to have to do it in a plastic cup or something like that, where you can't go because a lot of those beer cans are full. I mean, there's a 16 ounce aluminum ones that could hit someone. It's it wouldn't be a good situation. No. So, um, yeah, it's just one of those. It's just one of those whole. You know, we as golfers, it's really quiet out there most times, especially Thursday, Friday morning when you're out there, unless you're in a feature group like. There's just not a whole lot going on until the weekend and you know get in some of those corporate box areas where there's, you know, another, you know, they add a bunch of people around. So Phoenix is just a different animal. Um, it's the most, uh, I think it's the most attended event in the country, um, yes. like in, in all of sports. I mean, they get, I think over the course of the week, they had a half million people out there, yeah. <laughs> which is just ridiculous. You get almost 250,000 on Saturday. You just don't get anything like that um, from the, that whole entire back nine that there it's a little quiet holes one through five or six get a little bit quiet. Um, but six, uh, through nine kind of get closer to, to that back nine. but the back nine's packed. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're in your last place or first place. Uh, you're kind of still feeling it all the way around. Now, are you thinking about 16 the whole round? Are you thinking about, Hey, I can't wait to get over there. Yeah. I mean, cause you hear it. It's the other, I mean, you hear it when you're on the range, it's like you, you know, when someone has a good shot, you know, when someone, obviously doesn't hit the green when they get booed and um yeah it's it's just it's something you, you just can't really get away from were you on the golf course playing when sam made the hole in one i was but i was about as far away as you possibly get i was out on like the fourth and fifth hole mm -hmm. um which is the other side of the property because i was uh not playing great uh so i was near the bottom of the leaderboard so we were on the other side of the golf course and didn't actually hear it but I believe there's rumors starting to spread a little bit around. I mean, we we had we figured it out before we finished our round. You know, it's a, there was a buzz around the golf course for sure. Right. So you and Harry get up there. Does the shirt conversation happen on the tee box, on the walk to the green, or when you're on the green? How does that transpire? Well, it started the night before uh, Saturday night. Uh, I had some people over barbecued at my place here. Um, I just live 10, 15 minutes from TPC. So oh, cool. home event for me, a uh, bunch of extra stuff going on for me that week. But yeah, so we had some people over barbecued. 
And the text came through that Harry and I were paired together. Uh, we're only in a twosome because we're basically we're second to last off the tenth hole. So I sent a tweet out. Let's say, well, it actually started early that Saturday. Keith Mitchell started it with I think Max Home as well, trying to get him to take his shirt off on Saturday, and he started raising money. So they raised a bunch of money in the locker room and around, and he he wouldn't do it. And he said the reason I won't do it is because if I, if I take my shirt off right now and I go win the masters in April, people are going to think about me taking my shirt off the rest of my life. And I was like, oh, that's a pretty valid point. That's a good problem to have though. <laughs> yeah. So I had a couple of beers Saturday evening and tweeted out if uh, we get enough retweets, Harry, I'll take a shirt off on 16, but I didn't give a number. I just said enough. So I, I let him have an out. So it wasn't anything, but it, it kind of blew up rather quickly. So all the way around when we started on the, we started on 10 cruise around, people are, yelling at him to take his shirt off and he's looking at me with he's not happy uh he's like i'm not gonna do it you know we're in last place like no chance and now he has people yelling at him for an hour and a half before we get there and uh so we get so he's just like i'm not doing it. i'm like harry that's totally fine i respect that decision like don't even worry about it so we get into the arena and as we, we both, I actually had a good shot. He at first just hit it over the green, but I had a good shot to like 12, 15 feet. As we're walking up there, it starts to build. It's like, take it off, take it off. And I was like, <laughs> oh my goodness, this is happening. We look over as we approach the green, look over on the right, and there's probably 20 or 30 guys with their shirt off. Right. And it's like, so it, it's building. And then it just, it's nonstop. And then people kind of catch on. So the entire thing is chanting, take it off for multiple minutes. And uh, he hits a decent little chip putt up to eight feet. I was really nervous over my 12 footer because I was like, don't screw this up. Like, I don't know. It was like, you have all these people. Right. Like, Wait, it, it, was, it was like, yeah, exact. So whatever. So I had a terrible putt up there and tapped it in for par. But so here is eight feet. They are, it's getting louder as he's over the ball. Like it is. And uh, he rolls in the eight footer. And next thing I know, I mean, I was like instantaneous. I think he had like the shirt coming up as the ball's rolling because he knew he made it. <laughs> and uh, it was so loud. And so it really was like it was it was organic and it was it just happened on the spot. He's like, I'm not going right. to do it. I was like, fine. So that goes on. Then it just it's. a, And so I'm like, well, I can't let him do it alone. Can't uh, if I'm gonna come up with this crazy idea, I gotta 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 help the boy out. I'm not gonna leave him hanging. Uh, he's he's one of my good friends out there, and uh, so I took mine off and uh, oh. spun, swung it around the head a little bit, and then the beer started flying, and I was like, oh no, what did we just do? And uh, I don't know about immediate regret, but there was uh, some regret later in the day of like, wow, that was really fun, but like, what is this? You know, we're in last place. It's not like right. It didn't. It didn't affect anything really. But it, it was a good time and um, something that we'll always remember. For oh, sure. for sure. And next year, you know, we're going to see it next year as we get close to tournament week. You know, we're going to see it next year. Yeah, exactly. It'll. It's be something that'll probably be replayed a couple times. And um, you know, I don't pretend to be in the best shape in the world, but I actually looked okay next to Harry in there. So you did, exactly. <laughs> all things considered, hey, it's all yeah. relative. Uh, how long before you heard from somebody? Was it the tournament director? Was it Jay? How long before you heard from somebody? Uh, there's a guy named Andy Levinson at PJ Tour headquarters that deals with um, disciplinary things, and right. we knew we were at least getting a call. I mean, it's pretty. You can't take your shirt off in the middle of a PJ Tour event. Like it's, <laughs> we understood like what we did was right. probably wrong. So. He called us Monday. We were both, Harry and I were both at a charity event on Monday. And uh, so we, I just called him back that evening. Andy called back Andy Levinson that evening. And he's like, hey, Joel, you know, I probably have some. It's like, yeah, I understand. I shouldn't have taken my shirt off. Like, I'm aware this is like a code of conduct deal. And uh, also inciting the crowd. You're not supposed to incite the crowd. Um, right. So clearly that's what we did. Um, so he's like, hey, well, we're going to review this and we'll, we'll uh, you know, talk down the road and I said well in my defense you guys have published this on your own social media channels Instagram and Twitter right. on your right. own accounts right I go I haven't retweeted it I haven't done any of that stuff I really just kind of let it go I go so you can't find me and take advantage of the moment by you know you know you, you can't actually just use it all over your social media channels and then say oh you're wrong for doing this so they went back and I guess they chatted for a bit and we got the call the following week. It's like, hey, 
they're not going to fine you, but don't do it again. I'm like, yeah, right. of course. I'm sorry. I won't take my shirt off again. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I I'll think refrain it, from taking my clothes off on the golf right, course. Right. I think it actually, I think it was pretty fair and good. And uh, obviously they, they realize they probably can't have it both ways on that. Yeah, I saw it. For example, I see that as, I don't know if you remember a long time ago, if you watch much NFL football, ESPN used to do every Monday night, they did jacked up. And they would show amazing hits where guys yeah. got completely leveled. Yep. And then they were finding him. And I'm like, wait a second. I understand that you don't like the hit, but then don't publish it on TV and be like, oh, look how great this hit is. Like you're, 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 right. you're, you're incentivizing it one way and then finding him the other way. So it really was, very, that was a very, I, I think you probably helped yourself a lot by just pointing that out as like, Hey, real quick, I know you're going to talk about it, but just let me explain this to you real quick. And then you guys right. can have your own conversation. This is how, it, this is how I'm thinking about the whole deal. So I think it was, uh, it was a fun moment. Uh, Harry regretted it for a little bit, I think, but, um, I don't know. You're having fun with it, and it's yeah. uh, it, was, it wasn't like it was a random hole. I mean, we're on the 16th hole at Waste Management. It's as crazy as it gets, and right, we definitely played into that a little bit. Right. No, I agree. I thought it was great. And then we get to the players' week, and I'm telling you, man, I live here in Ponte Vedra. I've lived here for a few years now. We have not had five days of consecutive rain here in Jacksonville, Ponte Vedra, since the time I've lived here. And I have never seen so much rain. And so, I mean, it was like all four seasons in a matter of two days. It was wild. It was rainy. It was windy. It was cold. I mean, how we woke up one morning, it was in the 30s. It was it, freezing. It yes. was unbelievable. I saw, I did see you, you, you and I are very similar in our uh, tolerance for cold. Uh, none. Yeah, I don't have any. <laughs> when I went to the golf course on Saturday morning, that was the really cold morning. I think mean, Saturday morning. Sunday when I went morning, out there, I believe. Sunday. Oh, was it Sunday? I had Sunday leggings Sunday. on underneath my pants, and I felt like I was like a wussy. But then I saw you had full-on sweatpants underneath your pants. I'm like, yes, that is a man after my heart there. He knows cold weather and golf just don't mix. But not for me. I have uh, I grew up in eastern Washington, northern Idaho, so I was you know certainly a little bit cold, but I didn't play golf in it. I played basketball in the winters and wouldn't, wouldn't go outside. It was too cold. And then last – 11-ish years I've lived down here in Phoenix, Scottsdale area. So uh, the cold below 60 is I don't really like to, to go play golf in. So I was I was fortunate enough. So I went there. And the forecast had changed like kind of like Monday, Tuesday that week. So after it already arrived and it got obviously I knew it was going to be crazy weekend and, and super cold. So my wife was flying in. So I was like, hey, you need to bring me all of my cold weather gear. So Sweatpants, you know, the 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 under armor stuff or the, yeah. the under uh so we wore that. I had five layers on in that morning and and two on the bottom. And um thankfully it actually I did okay, like as far as staying warm out there and had some hand warmers and stuff like that. But that was as cold as I can remember being, especially you know, we're in Florida. I get that it's North Florida in March, but that is still ridiculously right. cold. It was. And now you got early. You were you were the early Thursday draw. So you played Thursday. And then you didn't see the golf course again until Sunday, correct? Correct. Yeah. So we had the rain delay on Thursday a bit and got out and was one of the last groups to finish. Uh, Are you one of the guys was, in the dark running from hole to hole like Ian Poulter? <laughs> I was two groups in front of Poulter. So okay. I like it was we were like perfect kind of just coasting in like on our own time. And uh, it was great. Uh, you know, we, we didn't really expect to see the golf course too much Friday. Um, and then, you know, with it just it was just mayhem out there. Luckily, we kind of bundled up inside and uh, I got to watch all the carnage on TV while I stayed warm and dry and the wind wasn't blowing there. So uh, that was all good. Yeah. I definitely had the better, better half of that draw for sure. Yeah. Saturday was insane. That wind on Saturday. I mean, the first three guys that hit balls on 17, all hit it in the water. I watched that. Yeah, exactly. It was five of six and they're all the top players in the world. When they showed up there, I was like, Oh my goodness, this is carnage right now. Yeah. We had Matt Neesmith on the other day and he was telling us that was a, a stat that guys who hit it, a certain height mm -hmm. were either sh were either long and guys that hit it too high were short. So right. you had to fit it in a window just to get it to stay on the well, green. It was on like Saturday 75 morning. to 85 feet or something like that it was like the window and like the stock shot from there is like a hundred feet on two or 110 feet. And uh, yeah, the flight in that one in there, which uh, yeah, it was kind of wild to see that. I, I do remember seeing that stat. So you played well. You were uh, you were there, you know, near the near the top of the leaderboard on Sunday. Correct. And there was the 
drop situation with you yeah. and Victor Hovland and and uh, and and Daniel Berger. What exactly went down there? Because the way that we saw it from television, there really wasn't a good angle of of where his ball had crossed. Yeah, um, it was. It it happens out there more than people think. Uh, you know, obviously the TV's to 16th hole in the final round of the players is when Hovland and Berger are both in the top five ish, if not top ten. And I think at that point I'm probably down in 25th or so. I didn't, wasn't playing great that day, but I was I was kind of hanging around and um, it was. It, it happens often where the ball crosses. It's a, it's a very difficult decision because no one really knows a camera angle almost never helps. Uh, rules official can't help because he's not like standing there watching. So it's like, he's not going to have any idea. So it's, and that's where it is. It's up to players. That's why golf is, I think the best, you know, one of the best sports in the world is we, we kind of police ourselves and um, you know, game of integrity and all of that jazz. And um, it's, it's our job as Victor and I job as, you know, a playing competitor in the group is we have to protect the field. And unfortunately, sometimes you have to disagree with another player, and it happens quite often, actually. Some, like I said, don't last as long, and some are kind of quicker. But uh, we both saw that his ball crossed earlier than what he wanted to drop. Um, and so he, he just kind of went forward, and I just I was like, I don't think it crossed that far up. And then Victor was kind of behind me. So Berger hit first, then I hit, and then Victor. So Berger's ahead of us already by 50, 60 yards. And I was like, I just I don't feel comfortable with where he's going to drop. And um, so you just kind of have to say it and he disagreed. But I think at, in the end, I think he dropped very close to what was proper. And um, it, it was, I mean, it, it's funny because, you know, you get done and you don't think anything of it. And then the media is grabbing hold of it. And Todd Lewis is asking for interviews for golf channel. I'm like, what do you guys do on the broadcast? You're like, I had, it was like, how does everyone know? I was like, Oh crap. So, um, but in the end, I, I really do think it ended up being a very fair drop. And after watching some video, um after all of that i think it was it was pretty close to fair and um i think it's all good was there tension after the round between the between you and hovland versus burr uh no no i mean yeah there's always like a little bit it wasn't anything sad i mean you know, we shook our hands we didn't sign the card and um that was kind of that like it's nothing i think they were both disappointed to not finish better because right. victor was like tied for the lead with six or seven to go or right there and so Berger makes both hits in the water on 16 and then Victor, I think hits in the water on 18 to finish a double. So I think they were both just, <clears throat> and I didn't play great on Sunday. So, you know, I fell down the board a bit. And so it was more than, it was just all disappointed. We didn't play better or, and, um, or at least finish better. And so it wasn't, it's not like I hang out with those guys anyways. And right. I don't think Victor and Berger are necessarily buddies. It's like I'm going to dinner with, so it's just kind of is what it is. But that kind of thing happens more often than we realize. Yeah, totally. I mean, you have 156 golfers out there Thursday, Friday, and there's water on whatever, let's say nine holes. Right. I mean, it's going to happen. A lot of times the player will go, hey, guys, do you think it crossed in this area? You say, yeah, there, you know, I think it's back 10 yards from that, or I think it's around that red post. I'm good with that. Um, I think sometimes guys get in a little bit of trouble is when they just go marching way ahead, doing it on their own, and then it causes that problem. If you say, hey, guys, where did you see that cross? And if, he, if we say, hey, we think it's way back here, you know, then the discussion kind of happened. And a lot of times it's like, I don't know if two guys see something. Right. You just, it's, you just kind of do it. Right. And to the people who say, why does it matter? The fact is you are protecting the field. Yeah, it's our job. I mean, it's, 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 it's why we pass each other's scorecards to each other, right? And it's why we sign each other's score and we keep each other's scores. So just... It's you can argue. I know there's a huge argument of the scorecard stuff now. Of like, hey, every shot's on TV. We have shot tracker. We have shot link. We have a million people watching. We know exactly what everyone shot. Why are we still keeping score? It's not like anyone else, any other sport keeps score anymore. Like you know the old school way. So, right. and there's some other stuff, but that's a whole other deal. But it's just yeah, we're the golfers are in charge of we're our own. We don't have rules officials in every group. They're not calling fouls. You know they're not calling whatever. So it's our it's our job as as competitors. How do you decide on the first tee who's keeping whose score? So you got a threesome. It's you, and, and just in this case, it's you, Hovland, and Berger. How do you decide you're keeping what and who's keeping who? The first tee starter, you just walk up and he just hands you some cards. I don't think that they have any particular oh, okay. reason either. Yeah, it's uh, they just hand you a different player's card and you said, okay. Um, and then if it's Thursday, Friday, so you play the same group, then you just make sure you have the same card again the next day. 
But okay, so if Thursday, Friday, if you keep uh, you know player A's mm-hmm. score, then you keep his score again the next day. Exactly, that stays that yeah. way. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, because so I've always yeah. wondered how do you decide who takes whose score. Like if if you got a buddy in the group, you keep his score, he keeps yours. I, I guess it doesn't. You, you guys don't determine it. Nope, we just walk on the first tee, and the rules official there, the starter, whoever it is, just kind of throws us a throws one of the cards. We say okay. Yeah, the players was definitely. Uh, it, it felt like a. It felt like almost a week of a tournament. I know it was only four days, but it felt just super long. When we were done at the players. It felt like Scotty's win at API was like a month ago when we got done with right. the tournament on Monday. It just felt really, really long. Now, I know your caddy. I had the pleasure of meeting your caddy on Friday night at an event here in Ponte Vedra. And then I saw that he, he rode his bike to beat traffic to the golf course, which is a very smart move here, by the way, because correct. I absolutely love TPC. However, there is one way in and one way out, and it's it, it gets a little crowded. Um. He rode his bike to the golf course. The problem is he rode, what, seven miles? He got there, and your tee time had been moved. Yeah, it was um, classic Gino, um, <laughs> having fun. Uh, we didn't. We weren't planning to tee off until, I think our original tee was like 5.30 on Saturday. Yeah, it was late. It was super <clears throat> so late, gonna play time like, hadn't changed yet. Right, so I was going to play like two holes. Right. And he was staying in the house with three or four other guys. They're staying up in Jack's beach, which is a 15 to 20 minute drive without traffic. I believe on a one a, the main drag there. Yep. And, uh, yeah, he, uh, one of his buddies left earlier. He's just going to go like have lunch, hang out, make sure he's there. Cause they know like historically the traffic's bad, but apparently it was extra bad Saturday. You had extra people going out there to watch. And, right. um, you know, first time in two years, it had been there like full, full of fans. And so, his buddy calls him, who's staying with, is like, I'm an hour and a half into this drive, and I still have probably another hour. And this is five or six, maybe seven miles that they're going. Wow. So Gino's like, well, I'm not going to do that. Like, No. So, or if he did, he would have to leave, like, right then. He's like, well, so he goes down in the rental house of the garage, he finds a bike, and I don't, it's, it's like a little beach cruiser, like, one speed, right? You just cruise up and down the beach, or hop to the bars real quick with it. And... <laughs> So Gino being Gino, bikes his way in. I'm I'm at the hotel right there at the host golf course, or you know, right host hotel right by the by the golf course. And he comes in and it's like, ooh, that was a lot tougher than I thought it was gonna be. Um, but he got there, I don't know, in 45 minutes or so, like pretty decent timing. I mean, saved right. him saved an hour and a half of, yeah. of sitting in a car. So yeah, uh, we're just sitting there watching the coverage on TV and about a half an hour later we get a call from the tour. It says, Hey Joel, we're running and you know golf is taking longer today you're actually not going to play today you'll be off tomorrow morning so i have another day off and he just looks like disgusted like just he's exhausted uh he's tired and he realized that now he because his plan was just to right we're going to throw the bike in the car go up to the course and he could just hop in with one of his roommates throw the bike in the back of the car and, be, and go home with him right well, no, he didn't want to sit around and wait for three or four hours. I wasn't willing to drive him back because that means that I was going to be stuck in traffic coming back into the golf course. <laughs> so he, he biked back. He hopped back on the bike and, and back he went. But this time, you know, he was it was back into the wind. Ooh. And like, and so it took him an hour and a half to get back home. And he was exhausted, but he did. He popped into a bar for uh, a, a, a beer and a banana because he was cramping up. So, uh, Got a beer and banana about halfway back, he said, and uh, it was it was a lot of extra work, but it was very much Gino uh, being Gino, that's for sure. Wow, that's a great story, man. I'm telling you, the players was the, the players was almost like a, a whole season in itself, just everything that happened that 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 week. It really was. It was it was kind of mayhem. It, the weather was like you said, all over the place, and finally crowning a, a champion on Monday evening, and then a lot of us, you know, cruised down to Valspar, which is a three three and a half hour drive, maybe. Yeah, it's a Tampa. So, Everyone, yeah, uh, is down there, and everyone's just exhausted. Like, uh, I saw more people playing Tuesday afternoon practice runs than I ever have because they wanted to sleep in and kind of, you know, get some rest on Tuesday. Yeah, because they didn't finish till late Monday. I mean, it was right. the sun was going down on Monday. I remember time had changed. Yeah, I didn't get um, to Tampa till nine, and I just grabbed some fast food or whatever and crashed and went to bed. And yeah, it was it was a mess. It really was. Uh, Joel, what are you working on in your swing right now? I know you're not playing this week, but you obviously are playing. Are you, are you playing next week at the RBC? I am, yeah. It's one of my favorite stops. Uh, yeah. So looking forward to that one. It fits my game. I'm not I'm not a bomber, so I, I hit it really straight and hit a bunch of greens. So 
I love um, Hilton Head. It's a great golf course. I think, yeah, yeah, everyone can play it. If you hit it far, you still have an advantage. But, um, you know, short, short players can still win there, which is kind of nice. And uh, as far as what I'm working on right now, it's it's always the same thing. I, I My alignment gets off. Uh, I aim right with my feet and left with my shoulders. Ooh. So I should close and open. And just crossing yeah. lines is just not great. So the more open I can get uh, and just feel like I'm kind of – I hit kind of like push fades a lot. Mm-hmm. Um and so it's really hard to hit a push fade when you're closed. So right when your feet are aimed right down the down the right side and your shoulders are aimed on the left side. Right. So I need to get everything going down that left side and just kind of feel like I'm coming down the line with it a little bit better. So it's something that's always it's a bugaboo that happens on the road and you know like I'll oh, just put down an alignment stick and do that. Well, you know the balls you want in the world, but as soon as you get under the gun, like you're gonna really it's something you have to really I have to focus on a lot is alignment, which is like the most basic part of the game, but when you get to the top of the players in the world, we don't really change our golf swings. Like it is what it is. Like it is ingrained in us. And there's a couple of people that can and do, but a lot of us, we just, you know, our golf swings are, are the same. So right. the alignment gets off, the grip gets off, you know, sometimes just, just a little bit of strategy stuff is off. But uh, yeah, for me, just kind of just make sure I'm, I'm, I'm squared up down the left side and, and really just trust my, my, my little bleeder cuts and, um, that's kind of it. I'm working hard on my putting right now. Um, and are you a putting changer? Like, he, for example, I notice sometimes, and just to, just for somebody that I've noticed a lot with, Dustin Johnson seems to switch putters. One minute he's got the trust, then he was playing with the um, the hydro blast, and now he's gone back to the spider. Like, I see him rotating putters a lot, week in and week out. Are you a putter changer, or is this more of a stroke? Um, yeah. So I I probably changed putter. So let's see. I had. The last putter I used for almost exactly a year, which is pretty good. I'll maybe go through, but they're all the same style, right? So they all are, I have a mallet, kind of a round back type deal. Right now I'm putting with a, a Rossi, um, which is just a simple mallet. Um, double bend and the grip's always the same. So like as much as I actually maybe do change putters, the style of the putter is always identical and right. it pretty much performs the same. So it's just what I want to look down and see or try to honeymoon face with a guy for a couple of weeks and see if that one works out as well. But um, for me... It's more, I thought my speed was off. My stroke is actually very good when you get on Quintec or, you know, any of those fancy machines that tell you all about your stroke. It's actually very solid. Right. Um, but I struggle reading the greens. And uh, then my speed gets off because I read them low and then I have to hit them firm to keep them online. And then all of a sudden, they're you know, I have a three or four footer coming back all day. Right. So working on speed and, and that's working on speed comes from actually, you know, reading the greens better and, and understanding what, what my tendencies are. And I overread right to lefters and under read left to righters. So I just have to move that spectrum a little more left on putting. But um, yeah, this is my, I didn't play last week and uh, obviously not playing this week. So um, be off for, for these two and, and, and rested for Hilton head and, and ready to go. We'll go Hilton head, New Orleans. And um, after that, it's a little bit up in the air, but that's, uh, that's the plan. No, Zerk, New Orleans. Have you, I saw that you were going to try and play with Rory. Is that still going down? Unfortunately, Rory says he has a wedding that weekend. Um, I will believe that. I, uh, but I, he's he's going. I think DJ's getting married, so um, he's going to go to DJ's wedding. He said if he didn't have the wedding, he would seriously consider playing with me. It's an easy out for him. Super nice. That guy. I is still one of my. I have a huge man crush on him. I think he's incredible. He's super nice. Easy to be around. Uh, lunch, breakfast in the clubhouse. You see him. You sit with him. He's he's awesome. Right. Um, so it was just obviously it was kind of a joke to throw out there with, um, you know, we kind of sent like a master style invite to him. Um, <laughs> once again, Gino helped a lot with this, <laughs> but uh, I thought it'd be fun and uh, threw a Hail Mary out there in hopes. And uh, maybe maybe something like that can happen down the road. But uh, I'm playing with Steven Yeager this year. So we've been okay. buddies for six or seven years, I think, since our Corn Fairy days. And um yeah, he's he's uh I think he's an underrated player. He hasn't quite found his footing on the PJ Tour yet. He's uh dominates down on the Corn Ferry Tour and just hasn't quite found his niche out here. And um so I'm hoping maybe you know, partnering with him where I hit the, yeah, I hit a lot of fairways, hit a lot of greens that can kind of free him up maybe to, you know, to to go make some some birdies and just have some more fun that week. So you kind of glossed over something there with D- to DJ's finally marrying Paulina. I had heard that that was happening at some point, but nobody ever really knows. So it looks like it's happening week of the Zurich then. Yeah, and I don't pretend to know any more than 
that as well. Uh, I have no idea where it is. I, whatever. And I, I guess I just, I didn't even realize they weren't married. I just right. assumed that they did that somewhere along the way, yeah, but no, they're not. No, that's they're all not. good. Yeah. Um, now Sam Burns, I know you and him are buddies. Cause I, I do remember he was, he was winning an event and you were standing on 18, uh, crushing some brews. Uh, while he was winning. So I know you and Sam Burns are buddies, but he usually plays with Billy at the Zurich, correct? Correct. I believe he's playing with Billy again. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've actually had a different partner every year. It's kind of been kind of bounced around, whatever. Um, I think the long-term play for me will be uh, Brandon Harkins, who I played with two or three years ago now. He's mm -hmm. my best friend here. In Scottsdale, we literally spend every day or night together our wives are best friends and we live five minutes away so oh, cool. we play in every money game here together at home and uh, we actually played really well until the back nine on sunday i think we were in the top five going into the back nine and, and didn't mm -hmm. finish it off but uh we just get along well on the golf course we get to do it every day at home so it's, it's easy to do out there and I, he should he's on track to get his card back um on the corn ferry tour this year and hopefully as a, uh, you know, we can stick together on tour out here for, for a long time and playing that often. Good deal, well, man. I appreciate your time, Joel. It's great having you on. You're somebody I've wanted to have on for a while, so I'm glad we found one to be able to uh, work this out. Before we let Absolutely. you go, we, we ask you quick nine questions. Some have to do with golf. Some don't have a damn thing to do with golf. Okay. So here we go. Number one, what's your favorite event on the PGA Tour? Ooh, it's hard to beat Pebble Beach because Pebble Beach, the food in New Orleans is, like, unmatched. Uh, but if I got to play one forever, I'm, I'm going to play Pebble. Pebble Beach, right? Mm -hmm. Number two, phone call or send a text? Text, for sure. Text, I'm definitely text. part of that new new age where we don't like the phone calls as much. Uh, would you rather just order it on Amazon and shows up at the door, or are you going to the store? Amazon all day. Amazon all day, okay. What is the dumbest thing you have heard from a fan or seen a fan do? There's so many of them. Uh, you know, just <laughs> actually this year at the Phoenix Open, there was some guy just marching down the first toll. There's only 10 of us out there, and he's just, I think he bit bet on me, and he was just hollering, screaming and yelling at me. He was hammer drunk, and Gino told him to quiet down a couple times, and finally Gino was like, started walking towards him. He was like, you need to be quiet right now, otherwise we will get you off this property. And uh, he just kind of sat down on the grass and, and melted down. But that was, that was as loud and directed at me as I, I remember. God, that's ridiculous. Yeah. What's the player you enjoy playing with the most or enjoy playing with the least on the PGA Tour? I really struggle playing with slow players. Um, so any slow player out there, I struggle with because I yeah. typically play pretty quick. And uh, I, I like the rhythm of that. Um, I mean, any of the top guys are great. I, I love watching Rory drive the golf ball. Um, you know, any of those is the Tiger. I got to play with Tiger four years ago, which was incredible. So. Any right. of those top guys is just really fun because they are really next level. I mean, they are, they're amazing. Right. If you weren't a pro golfer, what would Joel Damon be doing? I would be a sports broadcaster in Seattle talking about Seattle sports from Mariners, Seahawks to UW athletics. I think that'd be, I'd love to have like a daily show and just top on for a couple hours and talk about Seattle sports. We have a lot to talk about now with Russell Wilson going over to uh, going over. No, to we Monaco. don't talk about him anymore. He's on a different team. <laughs> I'm a Tampa Bay fan. We're happy to have Brady. I'm so yeah, glad he came out of retirement. So I'll take him as long. You know, if he wants to play until he's 80, we'll take him. I don't care. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> what is the most famous phone number in your cell phone? Probably Phil Mickelson's. Uh, probably Phil. Probably Phil. Okay. Fair enough. I'm, uh, I saw Bryson said he's been trying to get in touch with Phil. Phil doesn't want anything to do with anybody right now. So I have not uh, reached out to Phil. And, Phil's laying uh, low. <laughs> I don't plan on it either. No, Phil's laying low. Um, uh, another question. I know you said you get into money games. Whose pocket on the PGA Tour have you gotten into the most in practice rounds? Uh, Adam Shank loves to give me money. Um, that's just absolute lock. Uh, lately, I've had Streelman's number as well. Streelman, um, is good, but we did have that match, me and Phil against Harry and Keith, and uh, luckily Phil and I won that one. So I got into it. Harry Perry paid me on that one. So that was nice. I've I've paid for some nice dinners for Harry in return for that, though. Nice. And last but not least, what is the craziest or the dumbest swing thought you have heard during a pro am? Oh, geez. 
That's a pretty good question. Uh, <laughs> I mean, this guy, yeah, I, I guess the one that stands out to me who's actually like completely reverse pivoting, like he would put his weight left on the backswing and then fall back through his downswing. <laughs> and he thought that that's what he was trying to do. And he kept, and he just kept like repeating this deal and it kept getting worse. And I was like, actually, you should do the opposite of that. Like, it, I don't know, you just watch golf on TV or just, look around here maybe today and be like oh all the pros are not doing that so that one was was weird to me because it just didn't make any sense but you see a lot of interesting things in pro-ams but oh, I'm um sure. I'm yeah sure. and then of course what they what they tell you they're trying to do and what they're doing is usually two totally different things but in that case he was he was doing it it was wrong he was, but he was doing it right which is actually that was good of him he had, to, right. he had a swing thought and he was executing it which is unfortunate <laughs> Maybe if he had the right swing, thought he'd execute that, but Correct. probably not. Probably not. Definitely. Well, Joel, thanks so much, man. We will see you definitely at the uh, at the RBC next week. Awesome. And uh, let's hope, amen, fingers crossed, we get Tiger for four days at the Masters. That would be amazing this week. I'll be and, tuned in for and, sure. And uh, good week at the Zurich. Is uh, Good luck at the Zurich the week after as well. Yes. Man. Thank you very much. Enjoyed it. Have a good Thanks one. so much, man. I really appreciate you being on the Stripe Show podcast. You got it. Welcome to another edition of the Stripe Show podcast. Not just any Froggy Wednesday going on. We are live on Masters Week, and I'm telling you right now, nothing better than having somebody who knows the ins and outs of the Masters has played it. This is his eighth time playing it. Very, very honored to have Billy Horschel here on the Stripe Show podcast again today. Thanks so much for your time, Billy. My pleasure, Froggy. Um, so, hey, man, I know you're there now. We are uh, we're actually recording this on Tuesday. It's about uh, just after 3.30 Eastern time. Uh, and you guys are having some rough weather right now, right? Yeah, we got, um, I think majority of us thought we were going to get to about 1, 2, maybe even 3 o'clock today from what, you know, our weather channel said and the local weather, local weatherman said based off the radar and everything. And then um, roughly around 11 o'clock, they, they blew the horn uh, to sort of evacuate the golf course and for people to take shelter and and it wasn't too long after that, probably 45 minutes, that the heavy rain and lightning started. So, yeah, I mean, we're – right now I look outside. It's not raining too hard. But if I look on the radar, there is some nasty stuff coming later tonight or later today. So, yeah, it, it's unfortunate that, uh, you know, a, a special week like this that, um, you know, we don't we don't have great weather because, I mean, uh, it sucks for us that uh, – you know, for prep work and everything, trying to do, you know, get ready for the week. Um, but for the patrons and the fans, uh, the people who are coming for the first time um, mm -hmm. and maybe didn't look at the weather or only came out to the golf course and got two hours in, you know, that, that's sort of a little bit of a bummer for them uh, because it is a special weekend. Tomorrow the weather doesn't look good. And, and for the players, it's a really big thing, especially for, for like, guys like myself that have kids and everything to play the part three contest and it look and it looks like right now that may not happen oh. uh, hopefully hopefully it changes but you know it is what it is but the weather looks really good starting thursday all the way through uh sunday yeah the weather has not been our friend between now uh, here in ponte Vedra for the players the weather was not our friend and uh it's rough there now did you prepare this week knowing that this weather was coming in did you get some extra prep work done earlier in the week uh, I usually come up Sunday morning and, and, and either play nine holes or just practice around the practice area. Um, and that, and all I did Sunday was just practice around the practice area. And, uh, and so yesterday, knowing Tuesday, knowing what the weather was going to be like today, um, yes, it was a, a long day at the golf course, uh, sort of combined Monday and Tuesday into one day. Um, so t yesterday at the golf course for – 10 hours, what, wow. that's four, no, not that's too much, that's too much, eight, eight hours, nine hours at the golf course, long time, you know, played nine holes, did stuff on the, on the range with my teacher Todd Anderson, did our track man games, did our short game stuff, did our putting drills, sort of combined, like I said, Tuesday into Monday as well, just so knowing that we may not be able to get much done on Tuesday. How will this affect the rain you're getting today? How will it affect play Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? You know, that's a great question. Um, they obviously have the sub-air system, which they can dry out the greens and get them firmer and faster um, and take the moisture out of them. Um, but it's going to be – it's still – they still have an effect. The greens are still going to be receptive. They may not be nearly as fast. They may not get as crusty 
as if it's been dry all week and no rain where the greens starting Thursday start getting crusty, you know, starting to look a little bit like Bay Hill. Right. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but the fairways, you know, the fairways, they're going to play soft and this course drains. Well, listen, you don't have the money like Augusta have, <laughs> and not have a great draining golf course. Right. Exactly. So yeah. it's still going to be wet. It's still going to be soft. Um, but, you know, it's always tough to tell because, you know, we played here in November and they had some weather and I thought they were going to use the sub air and get the greens, you know, firm them up and, and dry them out a little bit and it plays soft. Um, so I think we we're all shocked by that a little bit. And I'm not, I think they did use a sub air, but not as much as we thought. Right. And so I, I, I really don't know. I mean, I think I'll, I'll be just like any, every, be like every other uh, person watching uh, Thursday morning. I have a late tea time to see what the course is playing like. So it gives me, um, I'm actually happy. I'm actually lucky to have a, a late tea time because now I can sort of watch a little bit of coverage and see how the course is playing and sort of game plan a little bit. You just took my next question right out of my mouth there. I was wondering if you do have a late tee time, you obviously are watching what's going on to say, hey, I see the golf course is playing this way. It's playing long. It's playing short. Or this hole seems receptive or this hole doesn't seem receptive. Yeah. I mean, you know, the link factor isn't isn't too much of an issue. I mean, yeah, some holes may play longer or they may not have an effect with the weather. It's more or less how receptive are the greens and how quick do they look, um, you know, for me being here my eighth time, I know the pin locations. I know what putts are fast. I know what putts are slow. So I'll have a good um, gauge watching where guys are putting from the speed of the greens a little bit. And then obviously the shots are in and around the greens, how receptive the greens are. All right. So this past Sunday, you drive down Magnolia Lane, you walk out on the range, and there stands a guy that you have you've been very well forward with and said that you're blessed to be friends with and there stands tiger Woods standing on the range probably something we thought we may never see again and then sunday there he is standing billy if you could talk about what it meant to you just as a friend to walk out there and see him standing there again and swinging a golf club yeah it was pretty pretty awesome to see i haven't seen him swing a golf club since the 2020 masters um the covid masters and um i haven't seen him at a golf course since then either i mean last time i saw him in person um was the world golf hall of fame and before that was the covid master so it's been a while i mean we do text back and forth he's a a really good buddy and and um we do stay in touch but to see him at augusta after everything he's gone through with a car accident and to see him hitting balls uh, it was pretty special and as anybody, as anybody who would be a friend of mine, I went over there and said hello and, and, and washed him at some balls. And I wanted to see with my own eyes, like, what what did he have? What kind of swing? What did his swing look like? You know, what was the speed looking like? Um, and I, I was really impressed. Uh, I remember watching the father and son. And I could see, you know, the swing just it didn't look bad. The swing looked great. It just didn't have a lot of speed. And, mm-hmm. um, and so his swing, what I saw on Sunday looked, very similar to what I saw before the car accident. Um, is there, there's still a lot of speed there. Is there still that speed? I, I think he may have lost some because I think being able to push off that right side, he's may have lost a little bit of that, but he still has a, a ton of club at speed. Um, I sort of peaked today when he was hitting balls on the range. When I walked by, he had his little, uh, I think it was, his version of the track man, the full swing sim, um, radar device and his ball speed is around 76 to 78, which means swing speed is around uh, swing, swing speed is around, you know, 117 to 119 wow. roughly. And so, I mean, that's pretty impressive. And uh, you know, think about the numerous back surgeries, think about, you know, what that ankle and leg has gone through and the, the screws and the plates and the, the rods and everything else that's in it. I mean, it's pretty impressive. And it's probably a little di- little different speed. I mean, he's he's bigger in the chest and and and, and stronger and more muscular up there. Um, you know, obviously, I think he had to get that way to be able to get himself around a little bit. Uh, but like I said, I was pretty impressed by what I saw in, this, in the sense of speed you know, the trajectory that he was hitting the ball. I mean, 
to me, like I said, and I, I've repeated myself many times now, it looked like the tiger that I saw before the car accident. Wow. Now, this morning he did a press conference, and Tiger is famous for saying he only enters a golf tournament if he feels he can win. And they said, do you think you can win this week? And he had two simple words. I do. Billy, what you saw, and I know there's a huge difference between what you see on the range and what you see on the golf course. And Freddie Couples played with him yesterday with JT and said he played great. Billy, the ball striking that you've seen on the range and what you've seen around the golf course this week, does it look like somebody that could contend? Yes, I think he can contend. You know, I was asked a question yesterday, do I think he can win? And I was like, man, that's, 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 that's a, I never count Tiger out. Right. You know, we all know you never count Tiger out, but you think about everything he's gone through in two years. He hasn't teed it up in almost two years. Uh, got to be some rust. Of competition. And yeah, it's got to be some rust. And the way you feel and the way your body is and everything is in practice, it changes come tournament time. I mean, there's more emotion. There's more. There's more adrenaline. There's more excitement. I mean, it, you right. know, some of the feels change a little bit. And so right. that's the thing that I don't want. I, 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 I'm not over. I don't want anybody to overlook. But right. it also can be used in your um, advantage because sometimes that allows you to focus in a little bit more. And it allows you to, if you do feel off a little bit, you're able to hit, you know, you focus in and somehow you, you, you get in this little groove and you play some really, really good golf. Right. And so um, I think, you know, there is a real possibility that he could do that. And I think it would be unbelievable if he contended and had a chance to win. And if it happens, man, this place is going to go berserk. Dude. I mean, <laughs> berserk. I mean, they may be kicking people out because they're having too much excitement and too much fun. Uh uh, I think it will be the stuff. most watched golf tournament in history if he is in contention on Sunday afternoon. If we thought 2020 was unbelievable, think about this Masters if he has a chance to win. I mean, it's going to blow that one out of the water. And that, I mean, <laughs> that, that that's going to be surreal. Surreal. Now, he said today in the press conference that the ball striking is not a problem. He can do – he has no limitations of his golf swing. He can do whatever he wants. He said the issue is the walk. And so for even myself, I've never been to Augusta National, and people who haven't been who are listening, maybe you can explain, what is it that is so difficult about that golf course, the walking of the golf course? I don't think the average person understands the climbing and downhills. And now with the weather, does that introduce maybe another aspect of making it more difficult to walk on a soft golf course? Walking on a soft golf course doesn't matter if it's flat or hilly. It, it matters. It, it, it does play a factor. Um, it is tougher to walk on anything that's softer. There's no doubt about that. There, I'm trying to think of one hole here, and I don't think there is one hole that I can think of, that when you walk off the tee, you walk on a flat piece of, of, of course all the way to the green. Um, you know, you're either walking down off the tee and then back up into the fairway, or you're walking up the tee, up from the tee, um, and then back down to the green. So, I mean, there's not one piece of flat earth on this entire property. And it is a challenge. It's a challenge for, for anyone. Um, I mean, it, it does take an effect. And it's going to have a bigger effect on him because he does have a limb that, you know, isn't comparable to his left. It does have uh, limited mobility. He does have pain. It is going to swell. Um, you know, he's talked about this. So, how well he recovers is going to be the the vital part of it. And I, that, that's going to be a challenge. That is going to be a challenge. I mean, he's going to play 18 holes and he's going to come back and play another 18 holes and come back, and play another 18, another 18. The great thing for him is he's got, a, he's got an early late tee time. So mm-hmm. he's going to get a nice recovery from after his first round tee time. And, and also the other great thing is that the weather looks great for Thursday through Sunday. So that's a big advantage. I mean, if the weather was bad here um, and we were going to have to maybe play 27 holes in a day or, or more than 18 holes in a day, that is a challenge in itself because that leg will get tired. And when that leg gets tired, what effects does that have on the golf swing? Right. This is all the stuff that Tiger has gone through and he's tested already. I guarantee you he's tested it and he knows what 
happens when his leg gets tired and the corrections and tweaks he needs to make in his swing to be able to make the golf swing and get through the golf ball. So, listen, this guy has always been the most prepared player in the history of the game of golf. There's not one stone he has not turned over to make sure he is prepared. And um, so, you know, we'll see, you know, come this week. And, and obviously I'm a competitor. I'm going to be trying to beat him and the other 90-something guys in this field. But I'm a fan of golf, and I love golf, and I will be watching very closely like everyone else. I love that. I know that Tiger has said himself that the leg is disfigured is the is the – the term that he has used. Have you seen the leg, Billy? <laughs> I have not seen the leg. I have not. Um, I mean, when, when he I said think, this disfigured, I have this thing in my mind that it just looks like it's from an, almost like an alien. You know, I may be able to get a peek at this week when we were both in the physio and where all the private physios are, are, are sort of perched up and working on guys. Right. Um, possibly, maybe not. I don't know. But listen, he wears a sleeve on the leg for a reason when, mm -hmm. you know, he has shorts on. And maybe it's to help with getting blood flow through the leg and everything else. But also, probably like he said, it doesn't look like the other leg at all. Right. Uh, and so, you know what, it's – it is what it is. And, it and is. he's – you know, well, I'm just happy he's walking this planet. So He's alive Whether it's, and he's – He's able to be a good dad to his kids still and do things Correct. with them. And now it could be the ugliest thing in the world. It could be the ugliest thing in the world. Whatever you think is the ugliest thing in the world, it could be even uglier than that. And, and I'm I don't just happy care. he's here. Right. I don't care. And on Thursday morning at 1045, he's going to stand on the first tee box and rip one down there. And it's something I never Correct. thought we'd see again. And that in itself is amazing. Now, back to yep. the golf course, they've made changes on 11. They added 15 yards. Uh, they've made changes at 15. They've added 20 yards. How different are those holes going to play than they've played in the past? So 11, I think them adding the length won't, won't really be that much of a, a difference because the way they've contoured that fairway now, um, before we were always laying into a slight upslope of a fairway. Um, and then if you carry it a certain distance, you're able to, you know, sort of get the flat and then it would start going downhill. Now, you know, a lot the, they've sort of cambered the fairway a little bit um, and it, the ball sort of lands on a flat to slight downhill, and the ball chases out to the fairway. Now, the right side where there used to be trees, they've taken all the trees out, and they've got these three big pines. And if you blow a drive right, you're going to be stuck behind them, right. um, possibly behind them. Maybe if you're underneath them, then you're you're golden. You're golden because you got a great angle on that green. But if you're behind them, then you got to figure out, do you go low? Do you just lay up out in the fairway and get up and down? Do you try and go up and over? I mean, it, it's going to bring in uh, an array of shots and, and strategies over there. But um, they sort of also, you know, widen that left side of the fairway they, where the pine straw used to come out a little bit. They mm -hmm. pushed that back a little bit and gave us a little bit more fairway, and that sort of kicks back into the middle of the fairway. So um, I actually think it's a better driving hole now. It's not nearly as tough as it used to be. And uh, so I think you're going to see where the last couple of years, I mean – Man, I was hitting five and six irons in there on a regular. And now, you know, there's a good chance if the wind's not blowing in, I'm going to be hitting, uh, you know, seven, eight irons in the green, which wow. makes a, a big difference. For sure. And that's with the, add, and that's with the added yardage. It's just because the way the fairway is now sloped and, and changed a little bit. Um, and then, you know, all the guys are talking about the right side and how much they dug down. Well, if you're parallel with the, the right side of the green, it's mm -hmm. maybe a little bit lower. But it's when you get back there by that bunker, it's you're considerably lower um, on the green to the green than it used to be. So um, that's changed a little bit. 15's a big, 15's a big one because uh, – Can guys get they, home in two now with the added 20 yards? Yeah, I mean, I got home yesterday. I had a driver five way to get there, and, and that's probably the, the max. Like, I won't be hitting three wood in that green. Um, it's yeah, one of those if you go things, over the greens too far, you're in the water behind it, right? Yeah, it's just one of those those things where if if you don't flight it right and comes you get a heater and it hits the back of the green or flies too far, you know, you got a good chance of going in the water back there. And right. so um, you know, they've added twenty yards and that fairway slopes up a little bit. And so for me, I have to hit a really good drive. Um I mean I I hit a solid one, I'm gonna have a five wood. Now I gotta hit a really good one to get an iron in my hand. If the wind, you know, if there's no wind, um, possibly. Um, so 
it's one of those things where the longer guys have a little bit of advantage there because they're able to fly it to a little flatter part on that fairway and the ball would chase down a little bit more. Uh, but I think you're going to see more people have to lay up on that hole and more wedge shots being played on that hole than in previous years uh, going forward. So, um, you know, is it a good thing with the length? Is it a bad thing? I don't know. I think um, obviously a long guy still have an advantage there. There's, that's always going to be the case. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, you're going to see maybe a few, uh, uh, quite a, maybe a few more balls in the water, possibly when guys go for it, because you're going to have longer clubs in the, in that green and if you miss it. Then you come up short. And, right. and, it, and if you, maybe if you hit it, you have too much club and you hit it too good and you pull it, you hit the backside of that green, it goes in the water on the left-hand side. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm planning on, you know, I'm, I've already prepared myself that I may have to lay up there all four days, which I'm totally fine with. Right. Okay. That makes sense. Cause the course is now over 7,500 yards. And I know the short game is always a premium at Augusta bill. You've got seven wins. You've got a WGC under your belt. I know the next step for you and something that you work really hard at is winning a major championship. How have you prepped different this year than maybe you've prepped in the past for Augusta? Um, I probably practiced less to tell you the truth. Really? Um, yeah, I, I, and, and that doesn't mean I haven't practiced at all, right. but I've, I've sort of, my game's been in a good spot and in years past when it's been in a good spot, I still grind hard and, and maybe over practice and just over, um, you know, overthink about things, get over complicated, just sort of, you know, I'm, I'm always thinking about Augusta, always thinking about Augusta because I take the week off before. And last week at home, I felt pretty good in my game. I, you know, I, I just tweaked, you know, just tweaked a few things, you know, just refined a few things. Um, didn't really over, over stress myself and just relaxed. And I'm trying to treat it as a regular tournament. Um, I know it, it may not be, but, um, you know, I, I think in years past, I've, I've, I've put too much emphasis on this event and, and sort of cost myself from playing well. So I'm sort of trying to go in here to this year as, as just a regular event do my regular prep work and, and not really try and, you know, add anything to the equation um, that doesn't really need to be added. Right. Well, you know what, man, listen, you know, you know, I don't have to tell you, you know, I'm pulling for you. I, if, if, I, I mean, but I'm going to be upfront and honest with you. If it came down to you and one other guy, I know I was pulling the other guy. Trust me. Trust <laughs> and, me. I, and I'm going to be, and I'm going to be so torn. I ain't going to know what to do. I'm just telling you. It's like, it, <laughs> It's, it's like the 2018 Tour Championship. 2018 Tour Championship. You know, I was I was way off the lead, but I made a charge here in the back nine, and all the other top guys, all the other guys who were up at the top of the leaderboard starting day were falling off, and it was just me and Tiger. And mm-hmm. Tiger was, I don't know, two or three back. Or I was two or three back at Tiger, and I'm making a little run. And and I'm like, man, if Tiger somehow falters and we have to go in a playoff, and I beat this guy. I mean, if Stuart Sink was the most hated man in, you know, in, in all of golf because he beat Tom Watson, Tom Watson. <laughs> at the Open Championship, I mean, my life is over. It's you were about to over. overthink I mean, the I'm most gonna, hated guy. <laughs> by far. I mean, I mean, here is a guy that we're, we, he's come back from back injury and he's trying to get his 82nd win on the PGA Tour or whatever number it was at that point. And for him, and, and everyone's so excited that he's finally going to probably win an event since he's come returned from injury and it's been years. I mean, and and I would be the one in his way to stop all that. Right. I mean, listen, there's only probably about ten people that would love me at that point, and and <laughs> and they may not have been my family members. <laughs> you know what? I get I get what you're saying, but you know what? It would it would have been. But Tiger and, and and I'll say this: I don't know Tiger as well as you do, but not even close. He wouldn't want you to let him win either. He would want. You oh to, no! He would want to beat no. you fair and square. <laughs> That's just how he is. Listen, I wouldn't want to let him win either. I want to win that $10 million FedEx Cup again if we win in the playoff back in 2018. I would have said, hey, Tiger, I'm very sorry that, you know, I cost you this. But you know what? I would have gone that plane home. Very happy that I got $10 million back in my bank account. So, Amen to that, um, man. Well, you know what, no, Billy? Good luck was, this week, man. Thanks. I just, I'm telling you, I, I would, would love nothing more than to see you put on a green jacket on Sunday afternoon. Hopefully the weather cooperates tomorrow. I know you want to get the kids out there. On the on, on yep. the par three on, on the par three contest and have them caddy for you and Brittany and everybody and so for you guys I hope it works out tomorrow. I always love the par three contest. Anyways, it's just fun. Yeah, it is. It is a great time. Great time. So 
It is a good time. And also, real quick, before we let you go, uh, thanks for all you do for uh, Feeding Northeast Florida. I know you donated a ton of money here from the players, and you always do so much. And so I just want to shine a light on all that you do for Feeding Northeast Florida in the community that you've that you've called home for so many years here in Ponte Vedra. Thanks for, all the, for everything you do here. Thanks, Harry. Thanks, buddy. Got it, man. We will talk to you soon, Billy. Good luck this week, man. Thanks for all your insight. I always love having you on the podcast. We'll talk Sounds to you good. soon. We'll see you next week. And then I'm guessing you're taking a week off for RBC, and then we'll see you in the, at the Zurich with Sam for the team event. Actually, I'm playing next week. Playing next couple, so I'm going to keep oh, you are. keep the mode I'm going. Yep. Nice. Yep. Good job. We'll see you at the RBC, and we'll see you in, uh, in New Orleans. Thanks again, Billy, man. Really Sounds appreciate good. it. See you, Froggy. See you, buddy.